hey guys welcome to another video my name is joe and in this video i'm just going to be walking you guys through um the creation of this scene it's a really simple scene something serene on water and um a little bit foggy also um so what i was actually doing right now in this shot or what i'm actually doing right now in this shot is kind of retexturing it to where it's good enough to work for the scene the texture i had before is, is kind of plain and basic so i'll get to mix in some textures and just try to see if i could um, get it better what i was doing right here is i was kind of isolating the edges what i used for that was an ambient occlusion node um just to isolate the edges and mixed in some noise into the ambient occlusion so i could have a little bit of variation in those edge wears. so once i was able to isolate that and make that as a mask i just um use that as um run that into the factor and apply the other color to the edge wear. something like nothing serious So right here, I'm still texturing and trying to dirty and muddy up the building as much as I can. And when I was done with that to where I was comfortable, I kind of went on to creating a base for it because I wanted this to be on a platform, even though it's unrealistic for a platform like this to be on, on water. I, I just still created it though because I felt like it would look cool. So what I started doing to fill out the entire building and give it a bit more mass was to start duplicating the building around and stretching, pulling, trying to create different variations of that same building. As you can see it down there, I, I was kind of using the building for the base of of um for the base of the platform that's supposed to be building. I think I removed that at a later time, but for now I was just trying to get get to something that looks good. So what I was doing with this second platform that I extended out of the screen, I just create an impression that that is an entrance to the building. Like it is somewhat of a platform that extends to shore so it's um something that will create an illusion that oh okay this is a plausible entrance into the building rather than maybe a boat or some other means of transport so that's what i wanted to create with this when i was done creating that platform i started creating like a pillar with some basic profiles on it and duplicated that across Right here, I'm introducing a little bit more buildings. Um, that's for my free building asset. You can check that in previous videos. Completely free of charge. You can get that and use that for yourself. And when I was done adding that building, just to actually still give it a little bit better profile, I started adding some mountains and I started add, adding some practical lights to the scene so that it's not just. Um, an ambient light on the entire scene. I wanted to add some interesting lights. So you'd see me duplicating um, some light fixtures like this and just duplicating it around the building to where it makes sense, okay? Something I'm still trying to get a grasp of is I notice these days I, I tend to make um, renders that look like a miniature. It's really, really hard for me to get my renders not to look like a miniature it's something i'm still trying to battle with and figure out a way to break away from that but something i've read online is if your scene begins to look like a miniature it has something to do with most of the time the scaling of your building relating relative to real life elements like a chair or a human things like that that's one i think i get that scaling on point i think i'm okay with that but the part that I think I may be lacking is the texturing part. There's a certain skill that building textures might have that might begin to look like a miniature. Or maybe it's not detailed enough. Sometimes it begins to look like a miniature. But for, for this, um, 
I'm not really sure it looks. I just knew that I had a friend I image that, that worked for me. And I just get on with it. So right here, I was thinking of adding some um, cloud planes just to play with the depth a bit more. I know I'm still going to add in um, a fog, a volumetric fog, but just to have a bit more control over it and add some more clouds, I tried to see if I could, you know, bring in some planes. I don't think that's something I use in the final render, but right here, I'd already darkened up the scene and I wanted to start lighting it in a way that it worked for me. I kind of start after directing those lights to actually play vital roles in the entire shot. So right here, I'm kind of just adding some more props around like a wire under, which doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, but it works for me. So, okay. Uh, I must go see that. So right here was something I brought in to kind of give a little bit more definition to the scene, the scale of the scene, and that was the boat. Something I would have done in hindsight was to, you know, add a human to that boat. But man, I don't know, it didn't just work. So I started adding some more volumetric, that's um, playing under is a volumetric fog. So I added the clouds close to the water to be so much more foggy than the one that is um, affecting the entire scene. So that's what I'm doing here. You would notice that I used two or three different volumetric box for this. Then someone asked me an interesting question recently. He was like, why do I like using water for my ground? Why do I like creating water scene, floody scene, things like that? And the simple question, the simple answer that could come to mind was, the fact that creating water is easy. You really don't need to um, add so much detail to get it to where it's actually doing the job. Unlike a ground, a solid ground, you literally have to have a particle system. You literally have to add to direct the way the stones are placed. You literally have to have a displacement on it for you to look, look good. Unlike water, you just place it there and and it works. It's it's a lazy approach to renderings and I hope to actually change it. But for now it works for me and until I'm comfortable with doing better grounds, I don't think I'm going to change I'm going to change that. So right here I'm trying to I'm trying to create on foreground something to determine um, the foreground a bit, something that would um, stand as the foreground. So I kind of du duplicated the building and put close to the camera, but it didn't, it didn't work. It wasn't something that was looking good, so I took it out. So right here, I, re I realized that the building on the, that platform was uh, was not working. It was, it was practically stupid, so I, I, I kind of Played around with it, I see it didn't work, I just took it out completely and replaced it with like um, a stone platform. So I, I, I kind of wanted a scene that was... Um, Kind of mysterious or uh, something um ah something kind of scary something like it's out of like a horror movie so i gave it like a tint of green with those yellow contrast um practical lightings to see how it's going to look i think in post i kind of changed it um but i'm not sure but the one out of blender had the had the feel that i actually wanted I 
uh, to be honest with you, I've really been lazy with my YouTube channel these days, and anyway, uh, the consistency of not being on the way should be. Uh, I think in order to even try to put myself on track a bit, I'm uh, I'm going to be releasing a tutorial every week. I don't know how it's going to happen. Maybe it's going to be in this format, so it's going to be easy on myself. But that is what uh, I think I should do, you know, in order to compensate for lost time. I, I practically haven't dropped a video in like a month, and that that's not good for a channel I'm trying to build, you know. Um, right here, I'm running the render, and I think I'm running this render in 4K. This is like a 400% more resolution on this. And I think my sample is at 512, around that. So I, that's why it's taking so much time, because this is time lapse times like 800, and it's still so slow. But I think the render is literally done now so i think any moment i'll take it down to photoshop go to camera row and start tweaking things around yeah this is what happened i actually changed it to a blue color which went away from the horror and um mysterious scene i was going for but then at the end of the day i still move back if you look at the tunnel you see that it's a green scene now but I still move back at the end of the day. The blue looked good, but no. It kind of defeated the purpose of the render. I think that's that's about it. Uh, so this is the before and after. So that's it, guys. So long. And until I see you in the next one. Peace.